whenever you guys are ready. What are some of the challenges of going on a road? You're going to have several, not just these next two, but you know, down the stretch, several big road games. Yeah, I mean, you know, playing on the road with kind of hostile crowds, you got to have some toughness about you, some mental toughness to be able to withstand some runs. And we, we kind of have talked to our guys about, if you look at our, we've had five games in the SEC where we've given up significant runs. We, uh, three of our losses, you know, we're up 21, opened the gate at Florida, big run, end of the half, start of the second half. Big, three of our five losses are basically down to four possessions. So, you know, two of those three came at home. I mean, you know, we were up double digits, up 12 zip on Arkansas, lose, then you're up 15 against Tennessee, lose, and in each of those games we gave up large runs, like more than double digit runs in a short amount of time. So we've talked to them about being a little bit more mentally tough, you know, being able to, if a team gets a score or two on you, like we've got to get a stop and we got to take care of the ball and get a decent shot up. So that, that becomes even bigger on the road. You definitely don't want to give up huge runs to a team on the road and really get the crowd into it. So yeah, we've, we've been trying to talk to them, talk them through what they need to do. I might need to, you know, I have used some timeouts. Maybe need to use even more timeouts to try to stop that. But I think our guys are, you know, we're getting better leadership. I think Petty's really trying. I think Kyra's trying to take ownership of the team. Part of that is stopping runs when they when they do, stopping them much shorter than what we've been stopping them now. What's your philosophy on using timeouts in those kind of situations? You know what? I mean, a lot of times I've had better teams, especially the last couple of years, you know, we're more talented sometimes in that situation. You let them figure it out. I think they, that helps them in the long run. Now with a younger team, I think sometimes I probably need to use more. I always like to have them in my pocket for late if we need them. But I, I'll tell you guys too, like I don't like to use a bunch of timeouts. So if you get stuck to save a turnover, like call one. I and mean, we get four. If you need to call one or two to save a turnover, I'd much rather use them that way than the other way. But knowing that we've given up runs, you know, sometimes you may need to call one before it gets to 15, you know, 15 2 or whatever. You may need to stop it at 7 0 or whatever it may be. I mean, some of these, though, we've, they kind of get our runs are like in the first half, beginning of the second half. So when you string game time together, it's a long run, but there's a 15 minute break. In between, it's a big timeout. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. We're constantly adjusting that. In the past, though, I typically haven't liked to call tons of timeouts. Has there been a different mood in practice? Or is that something you have to compensate for during a losing streak? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously not easy losing three in a row, and especially the last two when we were up and they're at home. But I think the guys have really, I mean, we've gotten some, even after the last game, we got coaching staff get text and guys taking ownership like we got to play better like they, they understand like there's our margin for error is real small right now without Herb so every little mistake kind of gets magnified so we got to be really on top of it especially on the defensive end with the turnovers like we can't have empty possessions on offense with the turnovers we can't have defensive breakdowns when you know, Herb's not there to cover them all. I think, you know, I thought Petty played really hard in the, late in that game, probably the last 10 minutes. I mean, he had 11 rebounds. But, you know, when he's got to get locked on to their best player and, you know, he doesn't have Herb roaming, it makes it a little bit harder in those situations. So knowing our margin of error is a lot smaller, we, we got to be better. And I think guys have owned that. I think the practice mood's been, I, honestly, I felt like the last two days in practice have been as good as we've had. I think, you know, we had some one-on-one -on -one meetings and make sure guys are on, on the same page. And I think their heads are in the right spot. We just, we got to come out and produce now. How many wins did you have? We, uh, we did. So, did we, I think so. You know, I mean, guys had a chance to kind of regroup. We didn't, I'm not one for having long, drawn out post-game talks. I'd rather watch it on video. Make sure I know what I'm talking about. I mean, a lot of times you think you saw something and get to the video, maybe there's some other issues that pop up. So didn't say a ton after the game Tuesday. Give them Wednesday off, 
don't really see anybody get staff organized. Then yeah, Thursday was a long day. Watched a lot of video, kind of addressed a lot of issues, and I thought we had a great practice. Went pretty long, actually Thursday longer than normal for February, but felt like we needed to. And then today was a lot lighter, about an hour, and get get them get them ready to go for tomorrow. Make sure their legs are fresh. How, how, how different is Georgia? We see the home in a way, you know, disparity on their record, but how different are they at home compared to what you see on the film? I mean. Their their best players are freshmen, so I think part of that. I mean, even you look at us, like our starting backcourt right now is essentially two freshmen. Now Kyra's a sophomore, but he's the same age as all these other freshmen. Some people forget that. Like we got two 18-year-old kids starting on the backcourt here. We're, we're young. Sometimes when you're young, it's a little up and down sometimes. And Kyra and Shaq have a lot of experience now. Kyra being in his second year, he came. Came into college year early, he's still 18 years old. So if you look at Georgia, Anthony Edwards is young, freshman, best player, you know, tons of upside, but he can, I mean, he definitely looks like the number one pick in the draft for large stretches of some games. And there's other games where it looks like he's 18 years old. So I think that goes a part of it. That when they get their home crowd behind them, it's probably easier to look like you're, the, I mean, there's stretches in games where Georgia looks like the best team in this league. I mean, you look what they did to Florida, the way they came out and opened that thing up to 22, and then just it was almost a tale of two halves, the second half. They just So at home, they're able to make those good stretches look a little bit longer, I think. So we're, we're going to probably see a pretty fired up team, I think. After, I mean, we know how we felt after giving up a 21-point lead at Florida, so I'm sure they're feeling the exact same way after giving up a 22-point lead. You mentioned Edwards. Just what kind of challenges does this guy have to present? I mean, he's 6'5", 225, I think they list him at. I mean, he looks like he's all that, and he's shooting the ball unbelievable. I mean, he's better in transition. I mean, he gets his threes in transition before your defense is set. So if guys are backpedaling to stay in front, I mean, you look at him, when he gets going downhill, I mean, he can finish at the rim with the best of them. I mean, you can see why NBA people are so high on them. So, you know, you look at us, we don't have, I mean, that's kind of what we're missing. You know, Rojas and Juwan are those long, athletic, big, strong wing, three, four. We don't have them. Herbs are, are one that we had on the roster with those two out. He's out. So we either got 6'5", 190, whatever John Petty is on a day-to-day -day basis, but he's not 225 like, you know, like Edwards is. So you either go that way or, you know, Shackelford's a little thicker, stronger, but he's 6'2", 6'3", whatever he is. So we don't, I mean, you can't put a big on him. I mean, he's just blow right by him every time. So we're a little bit limited in who we have to guard him. So he, as big a challenge as he presents to everybody he plays, he probably even presents a bigger challenge for us just with the way our roster is right now with who, Who's out? Who's injured for the uh, for the year? Uh, Beetle. Who? who, who uh, Beetle. I thought he was pretty pretty good in practice these last couple of days. I think I think he's able. To, I think they've got his whole deal fairly well figured out. Now he he's, hasn't put all the weight back on, so he's still down in weight. But he's eating food, staying down, practicing both days. Look pretty good, in my opinion. So you know. He can give us some shoot. He ended up playing 23 minutes the other night. We didn't plan on him playing. He was supposed to be a lot more limited, but with all the foul trouble, we had to. So I think I think he's more than capable of playing 20 plus minutes uh, this weekend. And one last question. Talk, talked about you know the benefit of playing at home, and but can there be a benefit to, to taking road, especially when you are struggling kind of the way you are? Yeah, I mean we lost two at home, so you know, we, and we were up in both, so it may not be the worst thing to go on the road, maybe get the group together, you're alone in the hotel room and spending some time on a plane, a bus together, get a little camaraderie. Sometimes that's not the worst. I mean, I, disappointing that we let the fans down. I think our fans have been great this year. Students have been coming out great. They, when you win, it helps bring them out even more. So it's disappointing to drop the two because we'd like the crowd to continue coming strong. Hopefully they do. Hopefully we can get back on winning, you know, some winning some games maybe on the road before we come back home again. But yeah, they're, they're 
maybe some value going on the road. You had one, you had one or? Yeah, but JV and Jaden talked about um, having that dog mentality. Is that something, you know, especially on the road, is that something that you've been still mending this week? And how does that play out on the road? How does that benefit you guys? Yeah, I mean, I've really been talking about winning plays versus losing plays. And we got to have, I think we've got some guys that really want to be winners. I mean, we got guys in at six in the morning. Like, we've got guys texting us. Like, we've got guys that want to get this thing figured out like badly but you have to make winning plays in the game like wanting to win doesn't always necessarily mean you're going to win and if all you do is think about winning the game you end up losing a lot what you have to do is make winning plays through the course of the game and not losing plays so you may turn the ball over to spurt back and get a stop you may miss a free throw a layup whatever it is just turn around make the next best play you can so we're Trying to do that. The other thing is, we, we, we kind of made that point, showed you the video. We also went through all the runs we've given up. And you, you can't, when you get a 15 point lead, that dog mentality that they're referring to, like you got to play just as hard when you're up 15, down 15, tied. Whatever. I, I showed them a clip from last night's game in the Bucks. I don't know if anybody saw it, like 30 seconds to go in the game, and Bucks are up 11, I and mean, it's over. But Giannis sprints back to make sure they didn't get a layup in transition with 20 some odd seconds to go in the game. Like, it's a reason, you know, the Bucks are five and a half games ahead or whatever they are ahead of the Lakers for best record in the league. Like, their best player, like I told our guys, like up 11 with 30 seconds to go. It's just how he plays every play. We got to get the same mentality. Like, let's make sure we're. For up 21, like we were in Florida, up 15 in the first half, up 12 zip. Like, it doesn't matter. You have to play every single play with max effort and locked into the defensive end. That's probably what they're talking about, dog mentality. I, I would be my guess as to what they were referring to when I talked to you guys. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.